morning and I've actually got a clear day today where I've got absolutely nothing to do so um, because I've got the extra time today I want to cover a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for the last week or so but um, I didn't just want to touch on it I wanted to explore it a little bit more um, and that is uh, the announcement that Ford are going to invest really heavily now certainly compared to what they used to do uh, in electric vehicles and um, where that's come about from <laughs> Uh, and the reason it's interested me is because um, Ford as a company, uh, not just here in the UK but worldwide, uh, have some of the best selling cars uh, and are consistently the best selling cars, uh, as I say, across the world. Um, certainly here in the UK last year, uh, number one best selling car was a Ford Fiesta and the number three best selling car was, was the Ford Focus. So you can see that for a company like Ford, who historically haven't really um, dabbled in the EV market uh, and I'll explore that a little bit more in a minute uh, for them to now announce that they're going to go from their measly I think it was something like four billion pounds investment um, to up that to 11 billion pounds uh, is really significant and what this will hopefully drive is the the interest that kind of um, understanding from everyday people, drivers, who really don't have a lot of interest in EVs at the moment, to actually look at them and actually start taking note because their favorite car company or one of the biggest brands in the world are now taking it seriously. And it's not some little niche product that some companies are trying to develop. Uh, if Ford are doing it, then people will start taking note. And of course that goes in hand in hand with the likes of uh, Volkswagen. Obviously they've got their own reasons for doing it, um, but that could be a whole other video. Um, and, and some of the other big brands that we've seen recently. So, as I said before, Ford uh, as a company, they haven't really had anything to do with EVs. The most they've had is a Ford Focus, an electric Ford Focus, developed sort of 2011, 12, depending where you were in the world. And um, it started off really well. It started off like a, they were kind of hand in hand with Leaf, with a Nissan Leaf, and um, it looked like they were probably gonna go in the right direction. But that's where it finished. They never pushed it, they never really advertised it. Uh, I have to say, I have never seen on the road a full electric Ford Focus. And um, you know, I'd love to have a look around, well, I'd love to have a drive of one, but then they're nowhere to be found. And that was highlighted uh, 2000, I think it was 16, 17 year in Europe, I think something like 61 all electric Ford Focuses were sold and that was it. So as a result, they shut down production. And um, I, you know, I don't understand why they got to the point where they had developed this car and then they didn't push it. Uh, and it can only come from uh, the direction of the management and where the management wanted to go. Uh, and that leads us on to where we are now. So until May 2017, Mark Fields was in charge of Ford. Uh, and he obviously had his very own ideas of where the company was going. And um, yeah, yes, he would talk about EVs and he, he looked to the future saying, yeah, EVs will be there. But do you know what? He didn't really do masses about it. Um, then in uh, May 2017, he was replaced by Jim Hackett, who came in and almost immediately started making changes. Uh, they, uh, they put together a team, they call it Team Edison, uh, and that is solely to look at um, EVs, autonomous driving, and um, this kind of car sharing type um, mode of transport that we'll probably look at in the future. But ultimately, straight away, he put that together uh, with a, a view and an understanding that, do you know what, this is where we're going. This is what the future holds, and if we can't get involved, then you know, we, we are gonna be left behind. And it's quite interesting, when you talk about the reasons why this change happened and why um, Hackett was brought in to replace Fields, uh, the um, chairman of Ford, who is Bill Ford, uh, he said that um, he was disappointed with the clock speed of Fields. Uh, which is why he turned to Hackett. Basically, uh, what he's saying there is um, Fields just wasn't seeing the future. He wasn't moving towards it. Uh, and Hackett obviously had that drive. And if they didn't get on the bandwagon, they would be left behind. And um, Ford as a motor company would really struggle to catch up. And he could see that happening. So uh, they stepped in and they made that change. And um, 
with the advent of Team Edison now, they've now got a plan in place going forward. And um, that plan covers some uh, interesting vehicles. Now there's, there's nothing, I think, out of the ordinary at the moment. There's certainly nothing that is going to um, ignite our enthusiasm into something that's great and bold and new. But what they are doing is uh, looking at the mainstream, looking at their most popular vehicles and how they can get uh, a big volume of EVs produced uh, and put out there. Uh, and it's interesting also that they've said that the investment that they're going to put in, in the short term, they're not really going to see many returns on. So they, they've already said that all this investment and all the cost of building EVs, uh, as we've seen with other manufacturers, actually the the amount of profit per car is quite small. Uh, that's going to get better. So uh, let's look at some of the vehicles then that they're talking about. And the kind of top of the list uh, is an SUV. And again, it comes as no surprise. We see all the, the manufacturers that are producing EVs at the moment are all looking to produce an SUV. It's very much the vehicle of the moment, really, um, where we've had hatchbacks in the past when now people want to drive SUVs because they don't want a big 4x4 but they want the room that a, a car doesn't offer them and they like driving position and when you couple that with a, you know, a battery and an electric motor the drive becomes so much nicer. So first and foremost they're going to look at an SUV and they've gone beyond that and they've hinted, this is where kind of rumours starting to circulate but they've hinted at bringing the old Mac 1 name out of um, out of retirement I guess which uh, is something that we used to see many many years ago on their sports cars uh, so it would indicate that they're looking at building a, a high performance SUV now that would be really good because that would be a really good starting point for them a, a family type car which has got the performance at a price that you or I could probably afford so I'm um, Let's let's hope that that comes that comes to fruition. Uh, and either way, a spin-off of that will then be a range of EVs because this design that they're going through at the moment is all about getting a, a basic EV platform that they can then build their different cars on. Much like we've seen with uh, Renault and Mitsubishi um, and Nissan, they're coming together to put their EV platform design and build one together so they can put their bodies on top. So uh, a really positive step in the right direction for Ford. So what else are they talking about? They, um, certainly in America, the F-150 pickup truck, they're looking at electrifying that. They're looking at a, a hybrid uh, Mustang, which uh, both those vehicles they're saying should be, along with the SUV, available by 2020. Uh, beyond that, they're saying that um, they are going to produce, I think it's something in the region of 40 electrified vehicles. So a mixture of full electric and hybrid of which 16 of those will be full electric. So uh, they really are kind of putting their money where their mouth is and they're, they're pushing forward. Obviously they can see that there's going to be a little bit of a handover period so they're edging their bets by staying hybrid but yeah it's no different from a lot of other people. Now to round the video off what I really wanted to do was to kind of show you some concept cars and give you an idea of what to expect from Ford especially with this SUV but it's difficult to find anything at all. And uh, it's obviously, it's all still very new and it's very much in the planning stages. They said they've got concept vehicles which they're going to put into uh, limited production to test. But at the moment, um, I haven't really got anything to show you. Uh, other than, let's have a little look at some other concept vehicles and what they're looking to release in the next year or so, because that might give us a bit of a clue. Now they're releasing the Edge ST, which um, is an SUV, small SUV, and uh, they're they're saying that that's going to be released in 2019 and um, it, I think, takes the kind of latest styling cues of Ford vehicles uh, and shows us what it's going to look like. Now, I'm not saying that uh, a full EV is going to necessarily take that on, but looking at how they've kind of positioned themselves, it sounds like what they want to do is take uh, very uh, mainstream cars and electrify them as opposed to making pure electric vehicles, one-off bespoke type designs. So possibly the Edge, uh, the Edge ST, gives us a really good clue to what uh, an EV may look like. Um, 
who knows? I'm, I'm kind of guessing here, but I wanted to give you a kind of a, a steer towards the future and what they're looking at. So uh, another really, really big step forward um, that excites me because I just want to see everyone driving EVs now because um, I can see the benefits of them having driven one for the last two, two and a half years. So um, that's where Ford are. Uh, obviously, we could talk for hours about all the other companies, whether it be Volkswagen or whoever, but um, uh, I think this is probably one of the the last mainstream manufacturers have been kind of fighting it until now who are coming on board uh, and it's great news. So um, that wraps up today's video. If you've enjoyed it, remember to like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and don't forget you can see or find me on Instagram and Twitter at EV Opinion. And I'll see you again soon. Take care.